Vicente Carrillo Fuentes is the former leader of Mexico's Juarez Cartel. He owns one of the main transit routes for billions of dollars in illicit shipments entering the United States from Mexico each year. Carrillo Fuentes is charged in a 46-count indictment in the Western District of Texas. Importation and possession with intent to distribute, as well as money laundering and ordering the intentional c***ing of individuals to prevent them from communicating information to U.S. law enforcement. So, how did he become the leader of the Juarez Cartel? What was his background in the notorious business? Stay tuned to the end of the video to find out. Vicente Carrillo Fuentes is Amado Carrillo Fuentes' brother. Amado was the Juarez Cartel's founder. But how did Amado build the entire empire that his brother took over? Amado was first assigned to the Guadalajara Cartel and dispatched to Ojinga, Chihuahua, to supervise his uncle, Ernesto Fonseca Carrillo, and to learn about the border operations from Pablo Acosta Villarreal and Rafael Aguiar Guajardo. Amado later joined Pablo Escobar's Cali Cartel, shipping cocaine from Colombia to Mexico and the United States. In addition, he collaborated with El Chapo, Joaquin Guzman Loera, and Arellano Felix family and the Beltron Leva organization. Carrillo allegedly developed a multi-billion dollar narcotics enterprise during his reign. It was projected that he produced more than $25 billion in income throughout his career. The pressure on U.S. and Mexican officials to apprehend Carrillo increased after the residents of Morelos State staged silent marches against the governor Jorge Carrillo Olea and his alleged complicity in related violence. Carrillo Fuentes possessed a home three blocks from the governor's official mansion and conducted narco fiestas in Tetecala on a regular basis. Governor Carrillo Olea was forced to resign and jailed. This sort of pressure may have persuaded Carrillo Fuentes to get a plastic surgery on his face and abdominal liposuction on July 4th of 1997 at Santa Monica Hospital in Mexico City to modify his look. However, he died during the procedure as a result of complications caused by either a specific or a failing respirator. Two of Carrillo Fuentes' bodyguards were in the operating room during the procedure. On November 7, 1997, the two surgeons who performed Carrillo's surgery were found dead, encased in concrete inside of steel drums, with their bodies showing signs of torture. When Amado died on July 3, 1997, as a result of complications from cosmetic surgery, a brief turf war erupted in Juarez over the cartel's leadership. Vicente would emerge victorious after fighting the Moles Talavera brothers for cartel dominance. Vicente collaborated with Juan Jose Esparragosa, Moreno, Rodolfo Carrillo Fuentes, Vicente Carrillo Leva, Ricardo Garcia Urquiza, and the Beltran Leva brothers. He retained some lieutenants nominally under his brother's command, including El Chaki Hernandez. The organization was in turmoil at the time Vicente took over the cartel, and the Mato's left a significant power vacuum in the Mexican underworld. During the 1990s, the Arellano Felix brothers became the most dominant organization, while Vincente was able to avoid direct competition and strengthen the Juarez cartel. The connection between Carrillo Fuentes' clan and other members of the organization deteriorated in the late 1990s and the early 2000s. After Joaquin Guzman Loera escaped from jail in 2001, numerous Juarez gang members switched to Guzman's Sinaloa cartel. Vicente Carrillo Fuentes, longtime leader of the Juarez cartel, is facing a ruthless onslaught by Mexico's most sought trafficker for control of Ciudad Juarez, which has turned one of the world's deadliest cities over from the border of El Paso, Texas. Carrillo Fuentes, who has a $5 million reward on his head in the United States, has surrendered little ground after two years of raids by heavily armed gunmen commanded by Joaquin Shorty Guzman. According to U.S. narcotics agents, his minions have retaliated by torturing and executing competitors while continuing to bring multi-ton shipments of cocaine into the country. Over the last two years, the turf war in Ciudad Juarez has murdered over 4,600 people, forcing the government to send 8,000 military and federal police to the industrial city. The escalation of violence risks undermining middle-class support for Calderon's crackdown. Special Agent Michael Sanders in the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration in Washington said, Vicente is still controlling the smuggling routes through the Juarez El Paso corridor. He remains one of the DEA's priority targets. Foreign investors are concerned about the d violence that has murdered over 18,000 people in Mexico since late 2006, prompting several U.S. corporations to cease investing in Ciudad Juarez. Mexico's tourism industry has been damaged as well. 
Carrillo Fuentes, a skilled horseman who exploits a network of cattle ranches in the northern state of Chihuahua to hold Colombian cocaine shipments, took over the Juarez cartel in 1997 and is trying to put the business in order ever since. Mexican narcotics officials and many of the country's media have attempted to depict Carrillo Fuentes, a devout Catholic, as severely damaged by the bloodshed at Ciudad Juarez. According to federal authorities, he made a serious mistake in 2008 when he attempted to charge Guzman, the boss of the northern Sinaloa cartel and a former ally, a levy to move through the desert city. Guzman's goal to take control of the city and add it to his trafficking empire across the Americas was spurred by the transfer. After Guzman escaped from jail in a laundry truck in 2001, some of Carrillo Fuentes' closest aides switched to the Sinaloa cartel. Calderon also claimed a major win when soldiers apprehended Carrillo Fuentes' nephew, Vicente Carrillo Leva, in Mexico City, accused of being the Juarez cartel's number two operative. However, drug analysts say Carrillo Fuentes called the Viceroy because he had a subordinate position in the Juarez cartel when his more flamboyant brother was still alive, is still in charge of around one-fifth of Mexico's $40 billion a year market. They credit him with leading a disciplined gang that has allowed him to elude detection for 13 years, even if he hasn't acquired the renown of Amado, his brother, who in the 1990s flew jet airliners full of Colombian cocaine into Mexico and became known as the Lord of the Skies. Arizona-based trade expert and author Charles Bowden, who has sources close to the Juarez cartel, said, Vincente is an unpretentious man. He dresses like a cowboy and he moves with few bodyguards. He speaks softly to others, but no one ever doubts who's in charge. Carrillo Fuentes is not believed to be the resident of Ciudad Juarez, and nothing is known about his location. However, he exerts significant power through his armed wing La Linea, the line, and runs operations with the help of local spies, attorneys, accountants, and dealers. According to several local officials, the Carrillo Fuentes families stay in the city for more than two decades means the Juarez cartel has paid off many in the police and local administration and is basically untouchable. Cesar Waregui, a politician from Calderon's ruling National Action Party, or PAN, who was running for Ciudad Juarez mayor, said, The people from the Juarez cartel, La Linea, they have the support of the Chihuahua state government and the Ciudad Juarez municipal police. Chihuahua officials refute the allegations, claiming that 70% of Ciudad Juarez police officers have been cleared of misconduct and the others are being restrained or have been sacked. After the capture of Carrillo Fuentes in 2014, a Mexican court sentenced the former boss of one of the country's most powerful trafficking groups to 28 years in prison. Thousands were killed in turf fights between competing cartels. Since Vincente Carrillo Fuentes was captured in 2014, the Juarez's cartel has lost a lot of power. The viceroy, Vicente Carrillo Fuentes, was convicted of trafficking and organized crime. He was one of the U.S. Drug Enforcement Administration's most wanted persons, with a $5 million bounty for his apprehension. For decades, the DEA and Mexican authorities attempted to apprehend Vincente Carrillo Fuentes. In October 2014, he and one of his bodyguards were apprehended at a police checkpoint in the northern Mexican state of Cavalia. According to police, he'd been keeping a low profile. Vicente Carrillo Fuentes established a complicated financial framework to launder the cartel's drug trafficking revenues. During his tenure, however, the Juarez cartel engaged in a brutal feud with the Sinaloa cartel, commanded by Joaquin El Chapo Guzman. The war with its Sinaloa competitors left the Juarez cartel severely weakened, but it is still believed to be responsible for a substantial number of in its stronghold of Ciudad Juarez. Vicente Carrillo Fuentes' 28-year sentence accounts for the time that he has already spent in jail since his arrest. Mexican authorities also nabbed Hector Beltran Leva as he ate fish tacos in a seafood restaurant in central Mexico on October the 1st. The capos are falling, said Samuel Gonzalez, Mexico's former top anti-drug prosecutor. It's a symptom of the pressure they're under to give results. Because they weren't permitted to speak to the press, the two officials supplied the information regarding Carrillo Fuentes' arrest insisted on remaining nameless. They didn't disclose any information on the capture. Vicente continued trafficking on a smaller scale, but during a far more dangerous period for the cartel. Carrillo Fuentes led the gang into a struggle for dominance of the area's trafficking routes, with interlopers from the Sinaloa cartel participating in a multi-year war that claimed at least 8,000 fatalities.
It's believed that the area in the transit point for up to 70% of the cocaine in the United States was located here. According to a description supplied to the Associated Press by the Mexican Attorney General's office, there were reservations among cartel members about Carrillo Fuentes' capacity to lead immediately after his brother's death. He was not believed to possess the leadership and decision-making skills, according to the document, noting this created internal tensions in the group. In the end, he was able to maintain an iron grip on the cartel while steering it in new directions, according to the report. As demand for cocaine in the United States fell, the gang began selling more of it in Mexico. So, do you have any questions that haven't been answered in today's video? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any of our incredible videos. Keep an eye out for the next one, and bye for now.